Okay, so as you recall in the previous video, I was mentioning that the, the ignition coils, both of them, went out on the beast the other day, which is kind of odd. I, I really didn't think that both of them could go out. That being said, I want to give you a little quick update before I get into the bulk of this video. I was reviewing the reviews. I was viewing the view, reviews of the Amazon replacement parts that I purchased, and there was a reviewer in there that said both of them mine went out at the same time same engine same everything so I guess it's possible probably more frequently than what they they admit so the other day I showed you how to test ignition coil but after I got to editing and watching the video I, I realized it was difficult to see what I was doing in the video so I'm going to try to do a little bit better job today show you how to test it and then one uh, I'm going to put the new ones on and then we'll run the mower and see what we got I'm waiting for UPS to show up is is what I'm waiting for so I have an, two old ones here this one came off the machine off the beast this one came off a generator. They're designed a little differently, but the principle is exactly the same. So we're going to take two ohms readings. And what ohms readings do is they test resistance. So we're wanting to make sure that it has the correct resistance. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to test the good one. I'm going to show you uh, how it's supposed to read. And then I'm going to test the bad one and show you what's happening to both of the ignition coils on the beast so I'm hoping we can see this a little better so we got the multimeter here what we're going to do is we're going to turn it to 200 ohms so right here 200 ohms on your multimeter this is the cheapest one they have at Walmart and then we're going to test to make sure the ohm meter is working so we're going to connect both leads together and you should be able to read zero so we know now it's working now most ignition coils have this little tab right here on it the one I'm going to show you that works doesn't have that tab there's no tab on it but this wire is a replacement for that tab this is the ground this is the negative this is what when you turn your key off it shorts out or grounds the ignition coil that's what turns off your lawnmower right there this tab so when you turn off your key it completes the circuit and grounds it out so just pretend that this wire is the ground so we got it at 200 ohms we're going to put one lead and it doesn't matter which color lead you use we're going to put one lead there and then we're going to put that other lead on that tab except in this one it's a wire i forget which, which side it is we'll have to check both not that one there it is so well here we have one ohm so that means uh, that this is good because the ohm should be like 0.5 ohms to two ohms so we'll just above the low now the second reading we're going to do is through the spark plug wire itself except now we're going to raise it to 20,000 ohms that way because this is much higher ohm reading now again we're going to touch the metal piece here then we're going to take our spark plug wire and we're going to touch the inside and here we see 15 ohms now this one becomes a little bit more questionable this depends on the specific ignition coil so this one's 15,000 ohms now you have to look up your own but typically if it's in between 5 and 20 thousands ohms then you know that this is good typically that's that's the range it's a huge range just to get an idea but like I said to be more specific you can look up your specific ignition coil 
So again, we're gonna do the same thing to the old one. We're gonna drop this down to 200 ohms. Now I have sanded a spot here. So there was no rust, because rust can cause resistance. And then we're gonna come to this tab. We're gonna touch it. And you're gonna see there is no reading there. Zero, there's nothing. Not even zero. So there's no resistance. Less than zero. That means the wire has broken on the primary winding. Now this one has a, Kohler did something really funny for a while. They've gotten away from it. But there are also some tabs on this other side that I decided to take a look at. And it's 0 0.2, 0 0.1, 0. So we can see that even on the other side, it's not doing enough resistance. So that means there's a break in the insulation between the windings of the coil. And then we are going to change this back to 20,000 20, ohms. And again, we're going to take it, we're going to hit this area that I've sanded off. The spark plug wire itself. And here we have 8.8. .8. Now I have looked at the specifications on this particular one. And this one's high out of spec, so it has too much resistance. It's supposed to be 7,000 ohms. This one's at 8.8, .8, so 8,800 ohms. Okay, so the new ignition coil just showed up, so we'll get these installed, get them gapped. Normally they say this side up, and I don't see anything that says this side up, so we're going to have to test them to make sure they're working after we get them put on before we put the shroud back on. All right, so we're gonna turn it until the magnet is underneath, or next to the uh, ignition coil. There it is right there. So we'll put that there. And that's a 10,000 feeler gauge. So we'll put a 10,000 feeler gauge there. The magnet will draw the ignition coil up to it. Okay, so mice have eaten some of the grounding wire. So I think I'm going to tape that up. They just chewed around the, the insulation. Doesn't look like they actually hit the, the wiring itself.
and this wire goes to the carburetor that's for the carburetor solenoid and it's uh, exposed too which is the most serious one because that's a positive wire and that wire if it hit a ground would short out Okay, so now we'll connect the ground wire. Okay, so now we're going to do the the other one. This one's chewed also. Let's just go ahead and do that one. Get it taped up. Okay, so I'm going to disconnect the carburetor solenoid wire and I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to check for spark. The way I'm going to check for spark is with my spark plug tester. Alright, so here's my spark plug tester. There's a light right here. It's hard to see in the bright sunlight like this, so I don't know how well you're going to see it. So you plug that into the spark plug. you plug that into the spark plug wire and we're going to turn it over hopefully we don't start the engine that's my goal hopefully I can see it okay I can see it I don't think you can see it because it's pretty bright but it's right there So now we got to check the other one. I'm not changing the spark plugs right now. I just changed them about, well, maybe an hour's worth of runtime on them. So I'm going to see if they're bad. I'm going to run these and make sure they're not bad. I mean, you can have new spark plugs that are bad. So I'm going to run them to see if they are bad. I don't want to waste the money on them if I don't have to. So once again, we're going to, you might be able to see it better on this side. It's a little bit more shaded.
I'll put you in close. So it is it is lighting up, but I can't see it through the camera, so I don't know if you can see it. Okay, so now we'll put the top back on. I gotta put the top back on and test it because I need to hook up the ignition. No, that's not correct. I need to hook up the voltage regulator so I got to hook up that carburetor Okay, so now I'm going to start it up, but the problem I was having before, it would start, but it wouldn't start acting strange for about a minute or so. So I'll start it, then I'll uh, let, shut off the camera, let it run for a bit, see how it does, and I'll come back on and tell you how it did.